Waka, 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 waka. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happened Now is brought to you by Stamps.com. Listen, as we slowly adjust into a new normal, we still need to do business as usual. How are you supposed to do that while keeping six feet away from other people? How? Luckily, there's Stamps.com to make things a lot easier. Thousands of small business owners have discovered the benefits of using Stamps.com in recent months. They've been able to keep their business going while avoiding crowds at the post office. Listen, you print the postage at home and you skip the lines with Stamps.com. Plus, you save money on discounts that you can't even get at the post office. And now, Stamps.com is working with UPS, so you get discounts up to 62%. How's that for you? Listen, my wife sends out t-shirts and mugs and a bunch of shit, and Stamps.com is the way to go. You leave it out, the mailman picks it up, ba-ba-boom. Next thing you know, you got a mug coming to your fucking house, cocksucker. So right now, they got a special offer for the church family. Stamps.com will give you a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. It's very easy. You go to Stamps.com, click the microphone on the top of the homepage, and press in church. C-H-U-R-C-H. Grab the pen. C-H-U-R-C-H. That's it. That's it. At Stamps.com, press church and stay safe. It's Wednesday, the 26th of August. Kick this fucking mule league. Oh, shit. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. Wednesday, we're down to two more motherfucking podcasts. We got Felicia Michaels in studio, the very beautiful Felicia oh, Michaels. Well, in thank studio. you, Mr. Diaz. What's thank happening you. to you? Fucking oh, you know, savage? just doing my thing, my pandemic thing. It's been rough, huh? It's been crazy. Yeah, because my kids have been there. I have a 19, as you know, and a 21 year old. And so, yeah, that's been. I. Can I. I know, I know, I know. It's joy. Trust me, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. And at the beginning of it, it was rough making them understand what the fuck is going on. And I kicked my son in the balls. Oh. I did. Why? What did you do? <laughs> I always told you, 10 years ago, I was telling you that one day you were going to have a... When you have a boy, when you have a son and... The dad's not around. Usually they get to an age one day because we do it to our dads. Why don't won't we do it to our moms? Right. We step right. into our dads one day. We actually think we could beat our dads out until yeah. they just punch you in the neck. Right. <laughs> you go down like a little fag that you are. <laughs> so if yes. boys do that to men, to their fathers, one oh. day they kind of get snippy with their moms. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you have no time. There's not. Yeah. If you play yeah. that white psychology shit, yeah. they're going to kill you. Yeah. They're going to kill sure. you. For sure. For sure. So you got to and do you know something what, Joey? extreme. Yeah. You know what? It was fucking freeing. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like, you, you kick know? somebody in the nuts. Oh, yeah. That's been bothering yeah. you during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. tremendous. That's, I that's, know. that's I know. You, could, you could pay a shrink 10 times. I you don't know. get the satisfaction yeah. of just yeah. kicking somebody really hard in the nuts. It's driving you crazy during yeah, a pandemic. Yeah. Because and that's what the thing has been like. Oh. I've really been worried. I, I've I've enjoyed doing the podcast because I know that there's a lot of people right now that never had mental health issues. But this this type of living, this type of uh, news gathering, uh-huh. the way it's being thrown at you. Oh it, yeah, it'll 100%. bring it'll bring fucking uh, you know, the mind of whatever down. I don't care who the fuck you are. And that's why I like to take a, a, an hour just to come here, bullshit, loosen people up a little bit, you know. Right, right. When I get anxiety now, it's when I answer messages for people. Yeah. My anxiety goes away. At yeah. night, when I get that 9 o'clock anxiety, I get on the computer. Right. And you get on Patreon, Facebook, and you just start answering people's messages. Back. Yeah. That's it. 100%. Because at the beginning of the pandemic, like, I went with them for such a long period of time where we weren't around anyone. And it got, like... You know, like every like once a month, four weeks in, it's a big kabooey because you're just sitting there, uh, you know, with busy little hands and nothing to do, you know. 
you know, and the exercise is a big part of it. Yes. Like today, yeah. today I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I went to the gym. And while I was at the gym, it came back to me like I was fresh again. I took like a falling off the bike. Gave me a little bit of a beating yesterday. It was just a rough, yeah. a rough day. How I did woke, it happen? I woke up in the middle of the night. You know, we had those tanks we were loading for the pods. Uh-huh. And we had one loaded, and, you know, uh, they're talking about stealing. People are robbing a lot of shit. So I woke up at 4, and I fucking went for the piece, and I ran outside like a lunatic. Because I just thought I heard something. I didn't hear shit. Fuck. Then I couldn't fall asleep again. You know, you see a lot of weird shit at night. I take a ride every night. Last night was the weirdest. Last night, I fucking took a ride. At about 9.30 at night. And right down the corner, there was a cat in the middle of the street. Oh. And I'm like, this, somebody hit this motherfucker. He was alive as disco. He just wanted to play in the middle of the street. Right. So I had to get out of the car and walk up to him. Yeah. He's sick. The cat is sick. Oh, okay. I could tell he's sick. He's on his last legs. He was kind of disoriented. So I pushed him to the sidewalk. Like I would get close to him and he'd move up. And thank God I went in the car. I knew I had a can of something, whether it was cat food. And I had a little can of cat food, and I opened it for it. Then I went home last night, and I kind of felt guilty. So I got back in the car. Like, after I spoke to you, one of those times when I told you to call you back. Right. That's what I did. I came back to check on him. The can was still there, but he was gone. Did he eat? He ate a little bit, but I saw some shit. I saw a lot of people in SUVs. Like, what are those Escalades? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. A lot of Escalades playing loud music. Like bass, heavy bass. I saw like three or four in this neighborhood, and that's not good. Huh. This ain't this type of neighborhood. This neighborhood has really changed. At uh-huh. night. It's well, really, I think really everything changed. has changed. Like I went to Hollywood yesterday, and I, at like uh, eight o'clock at night, I was uh, driving off through East Hollywood, and uh, there are people's houses on the curb. You know what I mean? And it's been uh, slowly getting worse. But it looks like, you know, it's people are getting evicted. People are choosing to leave. People are cutting bait and running. That fucking Sycamore Tavern, when you see the grass coming out of the street, like the concrete, like Uh the driveway, Mm -hmm. like grass is starting to grow on that driveway. I go back to when that place was Acapulco. I used oh, to have, right. remember? It was, yeah. It was Acapulco, all you could eat for lunch. Tremendous. <laughs> Cheese enchiladas like a motherfucker. <laughs> they had one there, and then they also had one. Acapulco was by the Sycamore, and then they also had one. If you stayed on Sunset, you pass the Scientology, and you make a right like you go going to Silver Lake, right there where Pinche Tacos is, that mm-hmm. taco place where white people go. You know what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about? Now? They, oh, my God. <laughs> they put pickles in their tacos right. and shit. <laughs> yeah, that place. It's next to there, Acapulco. And that used to be empty. So fat dudes would go up there and tear it up. Me, Ralphie, Key Tree Ball. We were in Acapulco every fucking day. And was it good, though? Yes. Oh, nice. It was good enough. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Come on, up. it was a lot better than Get the real fucking. Stone. It, it was a lot better than uh, like the the steak place. There was a steak place on La Brea for fucking. You mean Sizzler? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I I used to eat there all the time. Oh, every time. time you got like a forty dollar yeah. check, that, like, yeah. that was like a celebration. Speaking of that, because I know we all live in the, in the valley, or or you used to. Have you been up my street up to like? Where the gold gym used to be in the Sizzler. Yes. Gold gym is gone. Sizzler's gone. Yeah. They're living in the, in like the little. Did they call? They close Gold Gym. I think so. It doesn't look like the sign's gone. Yeah. Well, they were, they built a mall up there. They, yeah, a nice one. <laughs> a nice one, but uh, it's become fucking not a living dead up there. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm Entire gonna, blocks. Are I had to go closed. up there. That's where my dentist is. Oh, shit, okay. All the way past that, past, under the bridge. Yeah, it's scary up there. And then there. on the drive back, I saw that strip club. That looks like lonely fucking, because they're stripping, but they're stripping outside. Did you know that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? No. The strip clubs uh-huh. that are open. On uh, the, like, up Lancashire? No, no, not those disgusting ones. <laughs> you know, like when a strip club is a strip club. Right. They're open. The health department has let them open in certain cities. Right. But you got to dance outside. Yeah. 
So here you are in your car driving <laughs> down man. a side street, and here's fucking some chick <laughs> doing a table dance. There'd be a lot of fly traps yeah. out in the parking lot. <laughs> but George is working one. George Perez works oh, okay. the lunchtime shift uh-huh. as a DJ. During the day During outside? The day. Oh, my he God. He says they got 88 customers yesterday. I go, is that a lot? He goes, fuck yeah. He goes, people are burning through those unemployment checks at the strip club. Holy shit. Wow. I can see Lee's friends are back. He's got two. <laughs> we gotta bring, two we gotta bring, I gotta invite <laughs> my friends to the last little podcast. Wow. So stripping is like yeah. fucking big right now Listen, in Orange County. I'm big on like actually keeping things closed. But if strip clubs are open, comedy should be open. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> I, I still wouldn't go to a strip club. Right. But I'm just saying that strip clubs are getting creative. That they is are so outside funny. now. There's a chick. Good for gotta, those girls, but fuck, man. That's terrible for a girl. <laughs> I know. That's terrible. Hey, but those girls get real hot need in the sun. money. You know, those girls ha- have uh, big lives. A lot of them have kids. A lot of them, you know, are going to school. A lot of them, you know. So I'm not mad at them. It's funny. I watched that Jennifer Lopez movie about stripping. Uh huh. It was on one of the pay channels right. one night, and I watched on a plane first. It was on a plane. <laughs> I was on a plane one time, and it was on. I go, let me see what it was about. The Chinese girl was really cute, in it. so I kind of kept my attention. <laughs> but it was, have you seen that movie? No, uh-uh. called it's Hustlers, about, right? Hustlers, yeah. It's about strippers that uh-huh. fucking just take you down. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember oh. that. They just take you fucking down, like the whole thing. Uh-huh. Wasn't it, was, it based on a real person's life? Yeah, or yeah, something? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, it's so funny. Like he, they'll rob you. They'll fucking, you know, a good stripper. That's what their job is to fucking rob you. To promise you, you're gonna, he's gonna, they're gonna <laughs> suck your dick till the juice comes out. But they don't do nothing. Jesus. That's the best stripper. The one that tells you he's gonna eat your asshole, and meanwhile you're giving the twenties, and she's, she's, she's gonna meet your Denny's at two. That's the one. That's yeah. the, that's the, the best hospital. strippers at the bar <laughs> spouting bullshit so she doesn't have to do that much dancing. Yeah, it's that's crazy. That's the best stripper. <laughs> but they were taking, like, credit card shit. They were, like, on yeah. to it. They were killing stock market guys, killing them. Well, Cardi B came out because she's in that movie, and she came out and told people got really mad at her because she was basically drugging people and, ta- and, and stealing money from them <laughs> when, when, she'd go, when she'd go home with them. <laughs> If you're a man and you're going to let yourself ha- that happen to you, what are you going to do? I guess. you got to read. If a girl comes up to you and it's that easy, right? you got to know there's a by-the-way yeah. coming somewhere. There's a locked door somewhere. <laughs> Nobody yeah. just comes up to you and starts talking to you and makes it that easy for you unless there's a by-the-way somewhere. Right. They hide, Agreed. They, you know, right yeah. when you get them in the cars Agreed. and they hit you with the by-the-way. You have to be pretty sloppy at a strip club for a girl to, you know. Rob you. Me. Yeah, and do that. That's being pretty sloppy. Oh. Have you ever had anything like that happen? I've been, to, I've, I've been t- three times, twice with George. And it was uh-huh. fun with George because George is the king of that strip club and <laughs> and, and they all love him, so they're nice to me. But that's like that's part of the reason why I never went. It just, it just felt we- like it felt weird. Like I was like, this isn't a real. I'm just paying to get a boner. Like I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it never really made sense to me. I'm just getting paid to get frustrated. I don't, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what the point. It, it was great. They're fun and they're beautiful and right. it's fun. If if I if I was rich, if I like didn't care about five hundred bucks, I could see myself going. Once a month, but I'm still at a point where it's like, why am I spending 300 bucks here? Right. It's uh, I'm not, I'm not at that point yet. But it's fun. I, I can see it being f- the one. The one thing I still don't understand is like going with a bunch of guy friends and hanging out with them. Like when George was there, we, I'd see him and I'd see his bu- his buddies, but we'd split up. And like, I <laughs> like the real perverts that you are. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't, I don't understand going to Vegas. Like, I've I've been to Vegas uh-huh. ten times. I've never once been to. A, I don't. I can't imagine being at a table with all my other guy buddies having all of us having boners, just sitting there uncomfortable. Just that that, that part doesn't sound like fun to me. Yeah, take your corners. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy. I'm like, I think I start I started out a strip club guy. You know, I started out a a, a peep show guy. 
Uh-huh. Like my first sex Like an experience. old school peep show? Yeah, when you're 14, 13 in New right. York City. You go to the peep shows, you know, and you see people fucking in front of you. Wait, That's do you mean movies crazy. or do you mean like actually? Like, actually fucking. Oh, good Lord. And it's, it's <laughs> you know, looking back at it, you laugh. Right. But it is the most disgusting <laughs> experience that you could ever do as a man. Like to walk into a closet, watch two people fuck, pull your dick out, jerk off. You open the door and there's a little fucking Spanish guy with a mop. And a bucket. Well, I, I think you're. <laughs> he goes in, he wipes up your jizz, and he puts it in a bucket filled with other abortions. Because <laughs> oh, that's and and it was just horrible. Like when you're 13, you play hooky, you go at 10 in the morning, right? And you walk out, and you're like, "Wow, what the fuck did we just see?" <laughs> you know, and it's and, and you're happy because at 13, you saw a pussy and right. tits. Yeah. But when you when you realize it, you're just looking at a train wreck. Uh-huh. And she's just a train wreck. Like they would just, and I didn't realize it till I was older. Like when I was in my 30s, I would get off the bus right there in Port Authority. And in those days, for breakfast, breakfast was what it was, you know. And for me, it was that hot dog stand right by Times Square, right by fucking uh, Port Authority, on the corner. Not Grace Papaya. No, no, it was a hot dog stand that had sh- kebabs. <laughs> two dollar <laughs> kebabs. I get two fucking kebabs for breakfast. But I watched Peep World. The name of it was Peep World. Do you remember that the Laugh Factory uh-huh. opened up a club? Right, right. Right behind it. Oh, okay. It was called Peep World. And I would sit there, Leah, and eat the fucking kebabs at 8.15 in the morning. I wouldn't have to be at work till 9, 9.15. They wouldn't say nothing to me. And I'd wa- And you know who was the majority of the people going in there? Hasidic Jews, the Hasids, would go Mm -hmm. in there, not make eye contact with you. And then I would go, let me go just go. One day I said, let me go just go see what's going on there. And it's like going to the circus. You walk in, (coughs) there's a guy with a. Oh, no, absolutely. It's very social. Oh, yeah. That's a guy with tokens. And you give him $5 and he gives you fucking tokens. And then you walk into the back. You could smell like chlorine. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, it's yeah. like sperm chlorine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And chlorine, chlorine. Yeah. And you see men walking around, but nobody's really making eye contact because you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. Okay. Nobody, what are they walking around for? Because they're looking to Try see to what find their booth corner, is open. Lee. <laughs> There's different corners. There's Whoa. different chicks. Yeah. Like Felicia made a movie. Yeah, Pervs, which Joey was in, and you and, can get it on Amazon. But uh, but it was done in the Peep Show, the last working the, Peep Show in Los Angeles. Right over there. And that smell is dirty mop water, bleach, and sperm. And sperm. Which and it ha- and and sperm kind of to me has like a a Bloody Mary kind of smell to it, right? I fucking just nailed Isn't there the a smell tree of in sperm. California that smells like sperm. <laughs> I don't know. Every once in a while, you'll be I'll be walking and I'll just smell sperm outside. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know where the fuck you're walking. Unbelievable. Do you ever go to smell ever... sperm when he walks? No, I'm serious. Well, I'm telling you, you all the gay to... signs are coming out. Oh, no. A movie theater? Like that's what I'm glad I didn't have to go to. I went to a I went to a triple X movie theater. There was one on Sunday nights in Jersey. <laughs> and one night my buddy's like, Yeah, let's go to this triple X. We were just seniors in high school. Like six of us went. And when you go in the bathroom, that's when the party would start. Like two guys would follow you in, okay. and they would be so perverted that they would walk over to you and try to look at your dick while you were pissing. And then when you caught them, they look away. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, just say, like, uh, you know, I was a stripper. We all know that when I was eighteen, and uh, <clears throat> but I remember, like, I really need the fucking money, and it was like this contest, and I didn't give a fuck. And no one had ever talked, no man had ever had a conversation with me other than, you know, trying to get some, right? And I remember being on stage and I was dancing and there was a guy, I looked down, he's like jerking off. And let me tell you, it was fucking powerful. It was powerful. It was like, yeah, fuck these people. Powerful. If you're, when you get to that point where you have to do something like that, where you, you know what I mean? It's, it's fucking. I've jerked off outside in the car. It's not a sad moment. You know, it's not a sad I'm, moment. When I'm coming down off coke, I've oh. jerked off in a car when I lived in my car. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you about that. But to take your dick out and just whack off at a girl, I've never done that. That's the craziest yeah. fucking thing in the world. 
That's the craziest most Just to take your dick out. Like the Louis C.K., somebody that kills me. Like, I don't get that whole thing till this day. But that was his twist. That was the twist that made him brilliant. You follow me? There's people, certain people like certain deep, dark shit, you know? Yeah. That was the twist. Because if, if nobody ever accused him of rape or nothing like that, nobody said he was a bad guy. His thing was to whack off while he was talking to you on the phone or to ask you if he could whack off in front of you. How do you but, find out that's your thing? Though? <laughs> I guess it just, it just. Went right as you're asking the first girl, can I whack off in front of you? Yes. Ding, oh, that's yeah. my thing. You know, <laughs> listen, man, you see things as a child and they make you react differently and, you know, something could have happened. There's more to this story that we'll never know. Well, it's, you and, know, he's, and how long do you know him? He's a sweetheart of a guy. He gave me two jobs. I can never right. talk bad about Louis. I'm just talking. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking bad about Louis. I'm talking about the psychology of what. I knew a girl. I knew a girl. I had a dear friend that when you saw her, you couldn't believe it. Like, you were like, okay, this girl's pretty nice. She always was in the hunt for a boyfriend. But I heard years later, when she'd go on the road, she would have threesomes. And then let you know, guys would run trains with the headliner in the feature. You know, mm-hmm. I heard that years later. That was her thing. When you look at it, why would she do that? That was her thing. If I was a female comic, I wouldn't sleep with comics, but I would go on the road and work like a male comic, and get myself a piece of pussy, work them dry, and then throw them out in the morning like a fucking. <laughs> Because a, a man can't throw a woman out in the morning, but a woman can throw a man out in the morning. You it's never a threw a woman gr- out? No. I, my boss will tell somebody to leave. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen my dick? No, I okay, think so. so. Thankfully, if I'm you suck my dick, I have. If you suck my dick, <laughs> if you suck my dick, you're doing me a great favor. I don't have the balls to tell you to fucking leave. But you, you've just left, though. Oh, yeah, you leave because you, it's time to go. Okay. <laughs> But you can't, as a woman, <laughs> I've had, <laughs> honestly, honestly, I've had, like, when I was younger, I had, like, three women that dismissed me. <laughs> it's, a horrible, <laughs> it's a horrible feeling. How was, what was it like to be dismissed? Like, what was the move? Did they have similar moves when they dismissed you? One chick I was in love with, not really in love with. I was in love with a pussy. I, I was twenty. <laughs> I was twenty, and she was twenty-nine. Oh, oh, big yeah. difference, right? At oh that, fuck, she dismissed she used, you. <laughs> oh my god, it was horrible. She used a sponge back then. Oh. Okay. The she, worst. She. We were friends. We were neighbors, and I never ever intruded on her. Never spoke sexually to her. I was a twenty-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to treat her. She, I just thought she was hot. She had that. What's the mom from? Married with children. Katie Seagal? She had that Katie Seagal uh, yeah. type thing. When Katie Seagal was younger, like when I first saw Katie Seagal, I was like, oh my God, it looks like, I don't even remember what the girl's name now. She had a sister. And I kind of had a crush on the sister because I saw the sister one day watching TV and she had shorts on. Ooh. And I could tell her pussy was hairy as fuck. It was, it was, I could see the hair. She, had, she left the leg open so you could see the bush come out. And I was like, this sister's fucking hot. And the sister was about 25. But the one that was 29 was also hot. So she cut hair, and she worked at a wine store <laughs> at night. She cut hair in the daytime. Okay. And then from the barbershop, she went to a wine store where she was a general manager. She was like a whiny chick, like she knew all about wines and stuff. It was my first girlfriend in Colorado. We moved next to each other. We lived next to each other April, May, and June. And one day in June, she's cutting my hair, right? And we're talking about something. And she goes, you know what's been crazy to me? That you and none of your friends have ever hit on any of us. And I go, you know what? We're all from the same town and we were all raised the same. You're our neighbors. We don't see the, we don't want to bring drama to the house. And she goes, it would, it would have felt a little better before you left or something. To that effect, if one of you would at least hit on us at one time, because it was a, gr- a great place to live. It was called uh, Maroon. It was 
oh my God, it was in Basalt, Colorado, you know, 83. And it was like a, a side, it was condos and they were all built going up the hill. Right. But nobody locked their doors. Everybody had a screen door. Your dog was outside, you know, it was a mile from the road. So you had to make a right onto the property, drive a mile. And then all these houses were there next to each other. And everybody's house was open. The guy that lived next to me was an ex-Green Bay uh, Cleveland Brown. Big okay. motherfucker. He used to drink every day, come over, bring his drinks. Hey, I'm a brand new, young-eyed get criminal, but taking a little breather at the time. I had a little <laughs> money put away. I was taking a little breather. I didn't want to rob any of those apartments because they would have pegged it on me. My buddies would have pegged it on me. So I didn't do anything. I behaved myself like a gentleman. So one day this girl's cutting my hair. And she's just like poking me, like, what's the problem? Are you guys gay? Like, none of you have ever tried nothing. And I go, so what do you want me to tell you? And she goes, uh, what do you think of me? And I go, honestly, I think you're fucking hotter than hell. I think you got a great fucking ass. And, you know, <laughs> I told the truth. You want me to tell you? <clears throat> and she told me, she goes, when do you move out? And I go, July 1st. And she goes, we have a date July 2nd. She goes, I got to rule out and fuck my neighbors either. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I moved in <laughs> with my roommate that was living next to me. Uh-huh. That with the, you know, it was four guys from North Bergen. Jim, right. My roommate's name was Jimmy Burkle. God rest his soul. He died years later. I still miss him. I haven't taken his number out of my phone. He was my brother. And we lived together. I never really told him that I dated, that I was going to date this girl. So seriously. I moved July 1st, and July 2nd, she came up. He went away with his girlfriend and left me in the house. I had just moved there. So July 1st was like a Friday night, and they took me out to Aspen. We went out to Aspen because it was right next door to the uh-huh. We took the bus, and I blacked out. I got fucking hammered. I did blow. And I remember <laughs> I didn't know what apartment building to go to. And I knocked on the guy's door. And he opened it. I'm like, do I live here? And he's like, nah. You live. <laughs> I go, I know it's 12. Mm-hmm. I live in apartment 12. This apartment 12. He goes, maybe you're up. And he wa- ended walking me up to D12 where I lived. Right. The guy's name was Bergy. He was from <laughs> Pittsburgh. And I ended up becoming friends with him. Do I live here? Do I live here? He's like, nah. <laughs> get out the fuck. But he was a nice guy. Right. He walked me. I went home. That was like the weirdest weekend of my life. That Tuesday, that Saturday morning, I had to go into town to Aspen to buy like CDs or something. I was going to buy like a new CD. That, right. There was a CD store that was next to the wine store that that girl worked oh, at. okay. So I went into the wine store and I go, what's going on? Where's our date? And she goes, I get out of here about five. I was going to come up to your apartment in Snowmass Village. I'm like, ah. Oh. Like, this is real. Like, I didn't think, you're 29, I'm 20. Right. Like, this is real. Like, I'm like, what What happened to her? Like, I was joking. I'm like, what happened to our date? And she goes, I was just getting, I was just about to call you. I'm going to wow. come over and after I get out. So I fucking ran down to the thing. I was waiting there to take a bus. And there was a hitching, <laughs> there was a hitching post. There's a hitching post. So I hitchhiked. And the guy told me, he goes, I can't give you a ride up to Snowmass Village. I could only give you a ride to the bottom of the village, then cross 82 and hitchhike up to, to Snowman's village. I go, fine. I don't know who the guy was. But that's how life was, that you would get into a person's car. They had a bench in Aspen with a sign that had this on it. And it was a, right. and this meant I'm only going a little way. People were that nice that they beep at you and go, Lee, I'm only going this far. Or well, some people would go, come on, get in. Where are you going? Uh, uh, Glenwood Springs? Glenwood Springs was the farthest. Mm-hmm. You had Basalt. You had Snowmass Village. Some people went up the hill to go to the village. Some people would drop you off at the bottom and you had to walk across. Now, look it up. Route 82, one of the most dangerous fucking right. roads in the country. Once, oh, yeah. Once oh, November yeah. hits, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's why you don't go out when you live in that. You stay in Snowmass because... People get killed all the time on 82. So, but in the summer, it's a little different. In the summer, it's a little different. So I uh, cross the street. I go across the street. I'm standing there with my thumb out. And you don't even have to stand with your thumb out. People pull over. 
and one of those Jeeps pulls up with the eagle in front of it on the okay. hood. You yeah. remember which one? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was convertible, but he had the top on. <laughs> I walked to the car because he went by me and he stopped. Mm -hmm. So I had to run up to the car. And I was a little, you know, it's my, it's 12,000 feet. You know, it's a little higher than basalt. And I was kind of <laughs> huffing and puffing. I was in great shape. Yeah. But I remember walking in. I didn't even look at the guy. I said, thank you. When I looked, it was John motherfucking Denver, Jack. You shut the fuck yes, up. Yes, it was. Are you serious? Yes, it was. Oh, I'm my like, God. You're oh not John God. Denver. He goes, yes, I am. How you doing? He goes, I'm going <laughs> up to do my annual 4th of July thing. Wow. It's Snow Mass Village. He goes, come on. I'll give you a ride. And he gave me a ride to the supermarket. I shook his hand. We talked. And then I, I ran home, I went to the supermarket, bought some shit. I went home, we basically had a TV with a milk crate on top of it. We had like a homemade couch <laughs> with a, another milk crate with a, a board, a piece of wood. And then we had the two bedrooms. My bedroom was just a sheet <laughs> and a Wait, pillow. Did you call it a homemade couch like with milk cards on, on wood? Jimmy Burkle made put this fucking thing <laughs> together. <laughs> Of something, pillows and shit. Right. And there was one channel. It was yeah. Aspen Channel 2. And the only movie they played was fucking a Charles Bronson movie. Because they knew when Charles Bronson was up there. So they would replay his movies over and over. Because Charles liked his movies on TV. You think I'm fucking lying to you? <laughs> there was one channel, Lee. Aspen 2 until we got cable. How many times did you watch that Charles Bronson Mr. Movie? Majestic was the movie that was on all fucking weekend. <laughs> And then she came over. Uh -huh. She called and said she was, what was the address? I told mm -hmm. the D12. She came right in and she goes, let's, you know, again, guys, I'm from New York City, you know. I don't know nothing. She was a white chick and she's like, what are we doing inside? You know, we should, don't you have a lawn? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, let's go out to the lawn. And have yeah, like, you don't want to fuck around milk carton furniture. Yeah. <laughs> you know she I goes, mean? But, but my lawn was a shed lawn. Uh -huh. It was like there were other condos on the bottom floor. Right, right. So we just went out there with a sheet. I would never seen that. She put like a blanket out and she brought Colorado wine chips, and yeah. brie cheese. I know. Where's the American cheese? Like, I'm like, where's the mozzarella? And she's like, American cheese. She brought brie cheese I never, and apples. <laughs> I had never in my life seen that before. That is hilarious. I'm like, what is this? And she's like, you put some of the brie on the apple. And I'm like, oh, this fucking chick is crazy. Oh, right. <laughs> this chick is crazy. This chick is crazy. Yeah, right. I don't know about this shit, but it was good. And then we just went inside and it was natural. We just uh -huh. made love. We went into the shower. You made love? I think you gave it like three stabbings that day. <laughs> and it was so fucking good that... She dismissed you? No, 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 no. Okay, this is the moral okay. of the story. Let me tell you how good, the pussy, let me tell you how good, let me tell you how good the pussy was. So I gave her a stabbing that Saturday <laughs> afternoon, and she left Saturday afternoon and slept at the house. And I was at that age where the pussy was so good that I kept jerking off because the pussy was so good. I kept I couldn't take it till the next time. Okay. And she's like, just call me whenever you want to see me. And I'm like, <laughs> well, guess what? I want to see you again tomorrow. So I woke up that morning. I couldn't take it no more. I was jerking off all morning. I finally called her. I called her. I'm like, I'm coming down. And she goes, come down. I was going to cook. I went back down, and it was all day, all night. I remember one night we stayed up all night fucking. We'd do a little bit of coke, and she wouldn't shave her pussy. She was older, and she was just beautiful. Uh -huh. She had an Italian look to her. So this went on. This just went on for like... Four months, where the first month was heavy duty sex, but after that it was just, I'll call you when I want to give you a stabbing, and then that went on <laughs> for about two months, and then it started getting a little serious. Like she's like, I want you to meet my friends, and I'm like, I don't want to meet nobody. <laughs> like I don't want to meet nobody. Right. And then one day I went down there to a house or something, and we messed around. And she wanted me to go to see the Rocky Horror picture show. Picture show oh, oh yeah. And in those days, that oh, was not going to happen. Yeah. Like, and she would get dressed up. Uh -huh. Her oh, and her friends would get dressed up and yeah. sing the songs and shit. It was a little <laughs> too much for me. I was straight out of Jersey right then. And I remember telling her, listen, you got two options tonight. You could come over to the house and I could give you a stabbing, or I'm going to go see Trading Places. Oh, okay. Trading places okay, fair enough. just come out. It was like October, November of 83. 
we messed around for that long. And all of a sudden, she said to me, I'm not going to see trading places. And I go, what do you mean? And she goes, I'm not going to see trading places. You have to come with me. When she says, you have to come with me, I looked at her, I'm like, I'm not going. And she goes, well, you might as well just leave. And that was it. I never spoke to her again. What? Sandy was in there. Yeah. Come on, Sandy. Yeah, but that wasn't her dismissing you. She dismissed me right there. Yeah, I thought I thought dismissing meant more like, you know, just threw you, you to the side. Oh, but no. But the way I, you're saying it, it's like you were fucking, if you don't meet a girl's when friends. When I first moved here, I met a girl one night, took me home, we did everything, and the next morning she looked me straight in the face and she goes, I hope you're not expecting breakfast. You can leave. Oh, yeah. More like of those once stories. She wasn't, like, once the alcohol wore off. Right. And she looked at me in the light. She was like, <laughs> there's no breakfast here. You could go. <laughs> and I remember leaving there, like, it was down by, like, 3rd Avenue. Right. I never even left. <laughs> I had to take, like, a cab. I didn't know what I was. It was, like, on a Monday morning. Like, I've been dismissed. Yeah, do do you feel bad as a guy when you horrible, get dismissed? Yeah, horrible. Okay. How All would right. you feel if yeah. you, you know, and especially if you ate her ass and a pussy, you did everything that was expected of you. Okay. You know? <laughs> really, I had it happen once, and I was kind of happy. It was, like, a girl that we, we had just only had, we hooked up, like, two or three times, and it was, like, the last time, and we finished, she's like, you know, if you're not going to sleep over, you don't really have to uh, cuddle. Like, we, you can just leave. And I left. I was just like 45 minutes. <laughs> See, that's being dismissed. <laughs> I, was, I was still No, she dismissed me. And it's a terrible feeling. Like yeah, you, for sure. Like, it's a fucking horrible feeling, you know? So you think the other way. How can you say that to somebody? Especially right. after you smell my balls. How can I fucking just dismiss you? Ooh, yeah. you know I'm saying I can't dismiss you. So I got to at least take you for breakfast. <laughs> to, to bring you back to normal, you know, something. But no, it's a it's a horrible feeling, you know. It's a fucking terrible feeling. But it happens. It happens. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. I wonder what Sandy's doing now. I still think about it. I just remember her name just now. That was like the weirdest. I had two weird relationships like that. I had another one where I met a girl. I sold her a car. She brought her boyfriend, and I'm like, this cannot be happening. This good-looking broad cannot be dead in this fucking mutt. She didn't know how, that she was a 12. Right. She had no idea. She had a body for days that she was a 12. She dressed down. She was one of those bitches that didn't really show the goods. Right. But she just had the goods. <laughs> and I remember selling that car going, I'm going to fuck this chick. Like, this. no two ways about it. Look at this fucking guy for a boyfriend. She should be ashamed of herself. Her father never talked to her. I mean, the guy was a half of a fucking man. And I called her three days later just to check up on her. How's the car running? Ba 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 ba. What's going on? And I would call every like 10 days. How's the car running? And she goes, Are you asking me for something? Let's go on a date. She wanted a date. We had a couple of drinks. She didn't drink because she was a rehab counselor. Oh, okay. Oh. So, like, the first time I met her, I had a couple bumps in me. I had a <laughs> downplay. And I'm like, Oh. And like two days later, she told me she broke up with the guy. She goes, I couldn't deal with him no more. He was my college boyfriend. And then we just went on full straight on. We even got in the car and drove to Colorado together. Got all the way to Colorado. Were you in Colorado? Huh? Weren't you in Colorado? No, I was in Jersey. I met uh, her in. You were selling cars in Jersey? In Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. Is that who you came to Colorado with? That's the first who I came time? to Colorado oh, okay. with. Not the first time, the second time in 93. Yeah. We drove out in like three days in a Jeep, and she got an apartment. I had zero dollars. I had like $1,100. So she goes, you could stay here until you get your own apartment. I moved in with my cousin and, because she was a drug counselor. Yeah. So she was by yeah. the book. She didn't know. But I would go over there, get evil, like, you know, eat a monkey and then do a couple lines by myself in the bedroom and get evil and get hard lines and shit. And she was just... <laughs> A nice girl. And one day she told me, she goes, I know you're getting high. Don't come here anymore. Uh, and she opened the door and said, get out. And I got out. Never did you feel again. as bad that time as the other time? I never felt. You, you feel bad. Listen, you, you feel bad, but there comes a point when you're a, a young, like, like by, the, by the age of 24, as a man, you've either met your girlfriend that you're going to marry or you're on a slinging dick cycle. 
Okay. Okay. And what that means is you got to kiss a lot of frogs to get to your prince. Right. Okay. And it's it's I think it's hard. It was one of the things I regretted the most about my life. Like I can tell you, I had great times, but those women that, you know, how can we? What's the best way to put it without hurting anybody's feelings? Just our interactions, like. Today, as a man, I look at my daughter and I feel those interactions. Uh -huh. Like they went nowhere. Like, the, you know what I'm saying? Like we did dirty things and it went nowhere. Right. So I feel bad for them, for me, you know, like there was like 20 or 30 of them that, yeah. you know, I, I was single from, I was single from, you know, uh, I don't know, 91 to fucking. 95. Uh -huh. What's single mean? Single means you're getting pussy. Right. It's just not, none of it's sticking around. They got other agendas too. Yeah, absolutely. So from 91 to 95, I was dating drug girls. Girls who did drugs. They mm -hmm. did coke. They come over at two. Can I come over with my girlfriend? Fuck no. That's four noses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. four noses is all I need is one blowjob. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't need four fucking people over here starting right, my coat. Right. And it was kind of ugly. Like I, yeah. I look back at it, like what a, like what a, like some of them I still remember who they are, and I looked them up, and they're married, and they got kids. And the dirtiest one is like the president of the PTA. Right. Oh, up. I'm sure. I'm sure. Because I still talk to her parents. I was tight with her parents yeah. and stuff. And we used to do some dirty things on Sunday nights. And now I sit here. Me and her had a Sunday night relationship. She had a boyfriend. She'd break up with him every Saturday. Right. <laughs> and she'd go back with him on Tuesday. It was right. fucking disgusting. That's a genius move, by the way. It's disgusting. <laughs> no, it, was, it was such a disgusting. Right. So I look at those, all those relationships that didn't matter, and I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. Like, how bad was that? Like, that's what I look at bad stuff. Like, I'm like, I feel so bad. I wasted their time. I don't think you should uh, think of it as wasting their time. Although there is a building whenever I drive by it in West Hollywood where I shudder uh, because I had a coke-fueled night there once that was not correct. <laughs> so still to this day, even when my kids were little in the car, I drive by it like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 1988, 89. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but uh, but it's something I had to go through uh, and move on. So I don't think you should feel bad at all. You know. I do. It's yeah. weird, like you do. You know, I used to. Think like, how, how can I work with this girl again? Like, how can I? And so then I made a rule not to like sleep with people that were close to you. That's a bad rule. Like, people uh -huh. you have to be around every day. Right. That's always bad. Yeah. You know. Or get it out of the way. Or get it out of the way. <laughs> but yeah. it's just crazy that uh, I still think of all those getting dismissed. Like that still hurts. It doesn't hurt yeah. you. It's just part of the game. You know, you're going through. It's a, you're going through broads. That's the way to put it. If Sinatra was here, that's what he'd say to you. You're going through broads. The same way broads grow through men. Yeah. Ex they go through. Yeah. They go through. You know? It doesn't mean she's a slut or he's a whore. You just meet 20 people that you right. just don't really take it to the next level with. Right. And to some people, sex isn't intimate. You know what I mean? Well, what do you mean? Like there's making love and there's fucking someone. To some people, it's uh, you know, it's not intimate. You could fuck someone and for a long time, and there's it might not be intimate. You know what I mean? And it's a lot about like the space. Like Joey always makes fun of me for a girl named Milkshake. There was a girl who I w was with after Paula for three or four months, and we, like, I should have I, if I had met her at a different time, we might have like dated and actually done stuff like actually been a couple but uh -huh. right after I was right after a relationship and I, I couldn't the thought of going out to eat dinner with somebody like I, I, I was cringing I couldn't do it and so we ended up breaking up because she she caught feelings after a while but it, like I don't know it's a, a, but what headspace you're in too I think well what I'm talking about no I hear what you're saying but what I'm talking about like I was engaged after I got divorced to this guy and he uh, was like a reformed kink you know what I mean? Like he had a bag of uh, goodies in his closet, you know, and he'd be like, uh, you know, I really want to tie you up. Like 
but sex was never there was never eye contact in the most <coughs> deepest part of pleasuring another person it was very it and and he even asked me to marry him but that was one of the decisions why you know i didn't marry him because i said to him one day because it started to make me uh, feel like I had no value because the thing is too if you're with someone who's a kink you have to escalate that shit you can't just be like I'm going to tie your left foot up like more than one or two times and you got to be like well let me try an arm too with that left foot you know you have to escalate the the thing about it you know and uh, that's so I do think uh, it's not always where you hurt a girl's feelings when you're wait because it's all it's going the other way direction too does that make sense yeah yeah you know what one time in boulder i went against my fucking uh my instinct i messed around with a spanish bro <clears throat> she was a hot little mexican chick that her father owned the taco stand and we used to eat at and her and i used to like flirt like and then one day her brother threw me the number to the house and I called the house and she answered and we started talking and her and I like were I don't know and I remember we dated like uh, she was really cute but she came to my house the first three or four times uh-huh. and then one night she goes I live at my parents house part time but I have a roommate I have an apartment with a roommate when I go to school because she went to school in Colorado Springs, something crazy. Mm -hmm. So we had been together maybe two or three times and it was pretty good. It was drug fueled and the whole thing. And then, but every time before she would come, she would always like say, uh, I'm going to mount you tonight. Like it was always like she threatened <laughs> me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get on top of you tonight, like shit like that. Uh huh. Then the third time she said something to me, and then we talked in between. It was like a week where she was busy with school, and I remember calling and going, so when am I going to see you again? Because my car wouldn't have made it to fucking Denver in those days. I had a car that was a piece of shit that the door had a, a bungee cord. <laughs> I had to connect the bungee cord. Like if I was driving and I hit the bungee cord, I'd die. The thing would just wrap around my neck. You know how many times that thing almost took my eye out? Oh, my God. So I couldn't really drive a long distance. It was a car to drive, you know, just around right. the neighborhood. And I said to her, uh, she goes, well, you, wait till you come to my place, and I'm going to tie up. You're going to love the whips and shit. <clears throat> Never called her again. Oh, God. I know. Never called her again. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, she was yeah. talking about talking yeah. my ass and all this shit and whips and chains. And you could have just been like, no, thank you. I said, I'll call you next week. I'll call you in a few hours. <laughs> still waiting for the call. She's still waiting for the call. Yeah, she wanted to strap a dildo. Yeah. Her ex-boyfriend liked it. Yeah. You should oh. try it. I'm like, I don't think I'd really be into it. And she right. goes, I'm telling you, one time, I'll fuck you. Love it. Oh. And she just, So she wanted to spank you. Right. She wanted to fuck okay. me. She wanted to uh, fuck me in the ass with a fucking strap on. Right. And she was a beautiful girl. I just could yeah. not. There was no way that was happening. <laughs> personally like i did it because i was like okay i mean i'm just divorced why not right and then but then after a while you're like well he's just fucking me up against this mirror beating the shit out of me you know what i mean like i'm like if you know like and i'll let you know and i'd be like can you like just give me eye contact every third time you know what i mean but i could never understand the kink of it that's because it's not my kink like he would his thing is like he would want to tie my left foot because he had a four-poster bed, the giveaway, right? <laughs> so if a grown man has a four-poster bed, get the fuck out, right? So he would, like, tied my leg up, and the whole time we were having sex, I remember this the first time we did it, I kept thinking, like, it was such a turn-on to him, and I kept thinking, God, if he just would untie my leg, I could throw some more fucking torque this way, you know what I mean? Because I was just like, it wasn't a turn-on to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, once you take it to that different place like i right. have friends that have kinks right like i have one dear friend who has tremendous kinks and when he tells me about him i die of laughter like and what is his weirdest kink like a mask with a zipper and <laughs> putting balls in your mouth and tying you up that leather and all that shit and doing drugs and i mean he goes all the way and chicks go all the way with him 
Yeah. And nobody's ever accused him of rape. I know 20 women that have dated him, and they've all left on great terms. And I see the women that he's dated in Hollywood, and I just shake my head because I know at one time my boy had him tied up with a ball in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I see him on TV, and I'm like, my boy tied that bitch up to death. You know. No, my favorite ones are the ones that like go and buy rope at the hardware store, and they're like, "Hey, you wouldn't know, motherfucker." I had I had a horrible problem. I had a relationship with a girl that I loved dearly. I fell in love with her. The pussy was that good, but her kink was getting beat up. Oh yeah, yeah. And absolutely. I couldn't. It was just terrible. But the shit that came out of her mouth was, you know, like it was just crazy. Like the choking and all that. Yeah. Once you start getting into choking, you lose me. Oh, yeah. That's where you lose me. If yeah. I got a choke for you to get off, the craziest thing I did, there was a girl that I really liked, and for her to come, you had to come on her face. So you had to come on her face, <laughs> let it drip, and then fuck her, and she could come. <laughs> then there was another girl. Bro, I did some dirty. Boulder was a fucking nightmare. There was a chicken boulder that only let me eat a pussy when she took sleeping pills. That's the only way she could come. Uh-huh. And her it wasn't Xanax, it was Valium, the ones with the V's. Uh-huh. She'd take like 20 milligrams. You don't know how many times I ate a pussy and I'd be like, what's she going on? High. And she'd be passed out. <laughs> yeah. And she'd come and nod. Yeah. She'd squirt and pass See, that's how I would like to dismiss yeah, she people. Like a genius. <laughs> yeah, she's like genius. I know. That's a, damn, that's a good way to dismiss her. I should just get my shit and leave. Oh. oh my god I remember the first time I ever came across someone that was a kink and it was when I was 18 years old and I was a stripper at the Peppermint Lounge in Colorado Springs Colorado and there was this guy that would come in he was probably like 40 I would guess right now and he was a helicopter pilot for the oil companies right and he looked like a helicopter pilot from the oil companies very handsome right older guy right so then we we're like blah 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 he comes over to my place and I, you know, literally 18 and a half years old or something like that. And he's like, yeah, there's rubber bands in my pocket. Take a rubber band out. And I'd be like, what? He's like, just trust me. Take a rubber band out. Oh, my <laughs> I'd be God. Like, okay. <laughs> I take the rubber band. He's like, all right, I just want you to listen to me. I want you to take that rubber band. And I want you to put it around my balls, both balls tight. Maybe do it twice, three times a loop, okay? And I'd be like, what? And what? What? I, I don't know. That's kind of weird. And he'd be like, "Okay, I'm going to show you the first time." And he took the rubber band, put it around his balls, like, like right. It looked like, you know. Just want to know if we reuse them or we got new rubber bands every time. The craziest thing I do is I'm uncircumcised. So okay. if I jerk off, I hold the tip and I'll just sit there for like a minute, and get my oxygen to me. <laughs> And let my let the skin fill up with all the sperm, oh my God. and then I go to the toilet. And I just bloop, and it actually sounds like that. It goes bloop. And it just comes out of my dick. It hits the toilet. It looks like an oil spill for like two minutes. It looks like the Exxon Valdez, right? A little fucking oil. I flush that motherfucker. I hear. Oh, no. I hear. Are you the man? Are you the man? Spanish. It's that little Spanish what sperm. What does that mean? Help me. Okay. <laughs> That little Spanish sperm. So. Right. <laughs> what does it feel like just sitting there holding your, like, the tip? I just, I just sit there sometimes and think about the whole situation, how embarrassed I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a such and such year, whatever, because I've been doing this since I was, like, 20. <laughs> I finally realized, what's the rush? I'm not going to come in my shorts. I'm not going to come in the bed and lay on it. But if I just take the force and okay. hold it together, <laughs> it just fills up. I just let it fill up like a water balloon. <laughs> It's not a bad idea to fucking <laughs> whack off on a balcony and see people walking underneath and let the balloon loose. That's and... a terrible idea. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> oh well, God. anyway, let me finish it because I started it. So, oh. so he has his two little smugglers, right? And they're and it's all tight. And then he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, tap it. And I go, what? And he goes, tap it. And I'm like, what do you know? And he goes, and he takes my hand and he like tap it, right? Oh. And, I, and and he's like, it's just just my thing, just do it, right? And so I'd be like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then he got so turned on, I was like, yeah, bitch. I'm like, mm-hmm. and it was also very freeing. Oh, that is, I Isn't hate that, that crazy? so much. I can't imagine 
putting a rubber band around my nutsack and hitting it like a bell, like just hit, like bang, bang. Oh, like, like a boxing bag. Like he wanted it like that. Isn't that crazy? You don't know, like when people say to you like mushrooms. Who ate the first mushroom? Uh huh. Who figured out that if you if you took dog shit, or cow shit, and moved it over, there'd be a mushroom under it? That's who I when I think about when I think about half this shit. The guy from In Excess who would jerk off and tie a thing around his neck. You know, all those things have always been very. You know, I'm a criminal. You want to talk about criminality stuff? I know about. I know how to bury the body. But all that other shit, I was never really exposed to until like two years before I moved here. Mm -hmm. And then once you move here, you meet weird types yeah. of sex people. Yeah. I'm very lucky I met my wife when I met my wife. Because until the time I met my wife, I was meeting some weird fucking women. And we were doing some crazy fucking shit. It was not good. And yeah. it was not healthy. I, you know, When I go home and I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ. That just happened. That's bad. Yeah. Like just, just stupid sex with people. Yeah. Unprotected. You know, getting an eight ball. You know, going to a hotel. It was terrible. Well, you said something the other day about there's a lot of people where you grew up that married their high school sweethearts. Yes. And that's the other. That's like the opposite end of the spectrum. Like I, that. I have a friend who did, and I sometimes I'll think about like I wonder if he has a, a good sex life. Like I wonder if people like that are like fulfilled. If they if they really got someone they they wanted to spend the rest of their life with, oh, well, I know someone that was uh, high school sweethearts, and they have a very active sex life. It's never slowed, but they don't have kids, and they've been uh, married twenty five years, wow. but they never had kids. Yeah, crazy, right? I know it's such a crazy concept. Like what? <laughs> I like to have sex more, but I'm embarrassed to ask my wife. Like she's tired half the times. So it's like. Why ask? You know what I'm saying? To go through the whole fucking thing. <laughs> but when I was younger, I would wear you out if you were a woman. Yeah. Like, if you were my girlfriend, I wore you out. Just out of principle. Fuck it. You're here. Let's do right, it. Let's do right. it. Why not? Right before you go, you just come out of the shower. Let's see what that monkey smells like. It's fresh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm in a rush. Yeah, who cares? Everybody's in a rush. Right, right. I, well, I, now, I, hey, now that I'm home with my boys, oh, my God. Yeah, it's, you can do. it's not good you know it's kind of crazy Felicia 10 years ago I was about to 11 years ago I was about to quit comedy and I bumped into you and we started a podcast and here we are today I know a lot. 2000 happened. fucking 9 we did 100 episodes then I did 850 with this Mortadel and uh, here, here we are man you know I mean, we got into the podcasting thing when there was, we were calling Mark Marin for advice. Right. Like the big, I know. The, the, the big guy in town was uh, Corolla. Yeah. That was the big guy around yeah. town, you know. Now look where the podcast has gone to. So I wanted to get you three guys together in the room uh, and thanks, say that Joey. we did the right thing at the right time. You know, it's kind of crazy. And even stopping doing beauty and the beast was the right thing at, yes, the, right at the right time, time. for both of us yeah yes. at the because everything happens for a reason oh for sure like i i could see because i was the one uh like when, when we had the little website and people would write comments and it's like uh i totally could see that the direction you needed to go but i just couldn't participate because i had kids and a cranky ex-husband you know what i mean so it's like i couldn't you know and i totally get why that change needed to be made, you know? But I enjoyed my time with you. We had some we had great guests. We had a guests. lot of fun, yeah. That movie was on the other night. I kept thinking, you know, I was in a coy, but it was too late. Uh -huh. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. The guy that he said that that movie was based off him, the cop who kept torturing you, he, he was friends with your boyfriend, and he did that cop, he did the movie Colors. I think it was one of your oh, last right. episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, uh -huh. he did. He was the he was right. the cop that was supposed to play yes. colors. Yes, and he was drinking. Yeah, and he was breaking your balls about Dave. He kept asking you, "Have you gotten tested lately?" And you're like, yeah. "He kept asking you fucking right. different shit." I'll never forget that how much we <laughs> laughed. But yeah. the best thing from your podcast that I learned was storytelling. Oh, for sure. And like I this is when what people don't understand is when we got into 
we were open micers of podcasting. For sure. Like, we didn't even put up the first N- episodes. No, we, we did, like, ten episodes where we just hung around and just, and just talked. Talk. Yeah. And it was also, like, a learning process in... Because you had come from doing so much with Rogan, like... Uh, no jokes, no jokes, Felicia, right? Because I would come in with, you know, and to learn, I really, truly learned how to tell a better story by hearing your stories. And and to it was such a process of seeing uh, you uh, elevate it every time, you know what I mean? And And sometimes it's better to start a project without a goal to just start a project. You know what I mean? Just figuring it out, not overthinking stuff. Don't you agree? I Listen, when we started the podcast, we knew nothing about nothing. We knew nothing about nothing. Just like Rogan, Mm -hmm. just like Sam Tripoli, just like Bill Burr. You know, Mark Maron was already on the board with his, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, we called Mark for advice a couple times. Right, right. Nobody really knew. It was going into the unknown, not knowing. And now, look at what podcasts have done the last five years. Yeah, I mean, it's, crazy. Uh, it's, it's it's you go on the list. There's there's millions of fucking podcasts, and now there's no TV. I wonder how many TV produced podcasts are going to come out because we're going to go back to listening like 1955. Uh-huh. You know, we're going to go back to let's sit around the radio on Saturday nights and listen to. Fucking, you know, whatever. But I just wanted to thank you for. Uh, we did something really good. Uh, you and know, I never want you to forget you, that that we did something really good. And it was like, it was the weirdest story because we had been doing it for a while, and we were just going figuring out the moves, and. I told you a story about mugging a hooker and lighting her wig on fire. And I remember that I was so focused into telling the story, you had spit things up. Uh huh. You had mic guards oh. up. <laughs> and I was so focused on telling the story about this hooker and how we, you know, she got into a fight and she, she tried to cut Albie and then we got her into North Bergen and we took her to the Fairview Cemetery. And then we threw her out of the car, and she's like, what, you're going to kill me and all? And I remember at one point looking at you, because I was so involved in the story, and your jaw was, like, fucking wide open. And I go, we're on to something. That's when I realized I was on to something. And it's like Bert Kreischer said, because he told the machine story on Rogan, he's got to say it. He's got to talk about it now. He just... He goes, recently, I stopped talking about it because I stopped saying the fucking story. I got sick of saying the story. Right, right. But that hooker story carried me for a year Uh because people wanted to hear the hooker story. Right. It's so fucking weird how it all came down from Uh that. Yeah. And I still remember getting in the car. Like, I had done The Longest Yard. I had done a movie with De Niro. I had done Taxi. I had done all these little things. And... You know, there's a thing called selling tickets, you know. And the improv will book you. They'll book you anybody. If you're, if you're funny enough and you're right. the chops, they'll book you. And then when you, you know, you sell 90 tickets, they don't get mad at you. They'll rebook you, but they'll keep rebooking you to build your career, you know. And I'll tell you, when I did The Longest Yard, at that time, the equation was you did a movie, you sold tickets. You did a TV show, you sold tickets. Well, mm-hmm. I did a movie and did TV shows. And I didn't sell no fucking tickets. So here I am banging my head off the wall. How do you sell a ticket? It, it's really weird to think that telling a story about mugging a hooker and lighting her wig on fire changed my comedy career for what it is today. Right. That is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. It's just insane to me. Yeah. That telling that story changed everything. And then I take, like, you look at my two specials, they're dog shit. But if you look at the fucking things I did for Ari, that's my best work. That's my On, best work. Oh, this is not happening? Yeah, yeah those yeah, are yeah, my yeah. best work. That's yeah. my, I was so loose because right. it was Ari. And I knew that 
I had to do good for Ari. Yeah. Like it was so different where my motivation was. Like you learn all these things. But going back to the podcast. Can I just say, I hate when you downplay the, your specials. Like, I, I, Joey, when I watched your second special, I started to cry. Like, I was overwhelmed by it. Like, I, I, I don't like when you do that. Uh, we like all that. feel, it's like, you know, it's right. like sometimes you, you eat somebody's pussy, but you didn't eat it right. You I know, know but from the get-go, you were like, ah. And I was like, no, that's no, fucking sometimes, awesome Sometimes special. you just feel weird, but. We did some special, something very special, Felicia. And someday, you're going to write a book. You're going to write a journal. Somebody's going to write a book about podcasting or something. And our names are going to come up in that book. Well, so, yours certainly no, will. Yours <laughs> definitely will, too, because yeah. you were the uh, the bridge to the tunnel, kind of. You know? you know what I love about our story together is... Uh, how I had gotten divorced, and I've said this before, uh, but uh, and no one would talk to me in comedy, and I wanted to get back in, and you were the only one that reached out. The only one, Joey. What does that tell you about this town, Felicia? Yeah. It tells me that people are fucking hungry. Whether they really are hungry or emotionally hungry or, you know. You know, right now we're living in a, t- in a time in comedy where we're seeing our friends getting accused of things that we can't believe, you know, whether it's rape or, and we know these people. Mm-hmm. We've been around them, been around them for years. I mean, the lucky thing about you is not to make you look whatever, is that you were around for the two big, greatest bangers of comedy. I, I know. A lot of people I can't know. say that. You, I know. Dice. I know. You know, Kennison, that whole thing. You saw, and, and both of them were both drug and fueled and sex related. Both boost were, were right. you know, surrounded right. around this fucking bad shit. It was shit. different. Like when you were saying earlier in the podcast about how you, how you uh, sometimes miss how rowdy comedy was or how unforgiving it was. Like when you were, like being at the store and, you know, in the middle of the 80s, how crazy it was. Like I fucking miss sometimes. I get it. I get it. It can't go on like that. But I miss how literally it was like, you know, uh, craziness. It was just insanity. And For the store to have the talent that it had at this last run, uh-huh. there had to be a tamer there. Yeah. There was too much talent at that store. From Jeremiah Watkins oh, to yeah. Jessica Wellington to fucking Moses. Yeah. You know, I really, really, really want you to think of the spectrum of the store as far as talent is concerned. Mm-hmm. Never mind the Bill Burrs and the Dave Chappelle and the Joe Rogan. Fahim Anwar. Think about the Fahim Anwar. Fuck, Fahim Think about Anwar. the fucking black kid, the, the nice kid that does the, the rap Brian battle. Brian Simpson? Brian Moses. Oh, Brian Moses, Moses. Great guy. Think about, you know, you, know, you think about the spectrum think that is the Think about the people that were just coming up. Brian coming up. Simpson, Annie Letterman, who yes. you just had on. Like, to see <clears throat> Annie Letterman, man... Like the last year has been phenomenal to see her fucking. Go so you at look it. at that spectrum Fuck. to yeah. control that thing. You had to have management there. When the inmates ran the asylum, there was talent down there, but there was a lot of bad talent down there too. Yeah, there was more bad talent than what was good talent. Yeah, and when this organization came in, they told those people, "Don't come around here no more," because Mitzi had created, when I was the host there on Sunday nights, there were 60 guys from the Kennison days that were out there every night. And they were just looking and bad. You're just making yourself look bad. Go home. Go home. Your time came. It went. Right. Accept it. It's do so something hard, else. Though. Move on. It's so hard. It's hard, but it isn't hard. Right now, I'm at the crossroads of my well, life. Well, right now. It's and like I'm 57, it. and I'm like, yeah. when, by the time we get to do stand-up again, where am I really going to be? You know, let me tell you something. I mean, I'm not talking about you. You you look beautiful. I know that this three-month pandemic has put four years of wind damage on my face. I feel the same way. I'm telling you right now that I saw pictures of friends of mine on Facebook, and I'm like, we've aged that much in three months. Yeah, once this slows down and the pandemic goes away, we'll unage. But we're aging 
Mm -hmm. uh, triple at the amount right now because of the way we're living. Yeah, because it's stressful. We're living. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm living healthy. I'm drinking fucking water. I'm doing all the right stuff, but our minds are getting weird. You know. Right. I don't even know where I was going with. No, I just think because it's so uncertain right now. It's so uncertain. You know, if you if you are blessed where you don't have to worry for your own safety or your own needs, you uh, it's you are completely. Uh, you know, full of empathy for people that are going through so much. Like, think about all the young comics. Or a lot of people are moving out of town. A lot of people, you know, are, don't have means, and and it's it's unsettling. Like, what what's going to happen two months from now? What's going to happen? You know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when this podcast hits, we'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But the I mean, Felicia, you, Joey, just said you went through both. Boom, booms, but right. you also were went through being one of the biggest comics in the country to not to not doing it for a long time right. and working your way back to the comedy right. store. So you, like Joy was like, you were just saying you don't know what's going to happen. Felicia's proof that you can not be on stage and then get back on. Comedy's stage. a journey. Bro. Yeah, Life comedy is a might journey. shift though. Comedy's going to shift. Comedy might shift. Comedy might do a lot of stuff, but. Uh, I'm just happy we were part of Beauty I and the know. Beast. Thank and you, I'm Joey. happy I was part of the comedy store with you. Me. And I was happy that you gave me advice in 94. And look where we're at 26 years later. And we're still friends. And I love you with all my I heart. I love you, too. And I'm happy you can make it on for the, you're the last guest of the church of what's happened now. Get the fuck out of here, really? Yeah, we're just wow. going to do a, a wrap-up. And we're going to leave him a gem. Uh -huh. Next week, we're going to surprise him. And uh, that's it. Lee's going to go to Milwaukee. I'm going to New Jersey. And you're going to, to New, New York. York. So yeah. we will all be gone. Real quick, before I get out of here, I don't want to forget nothing to nobody. Remember, the church podcast today is brought to you by stamps.com. As we slowly adjust to a new normal, we still need to do business as usual. How are you supposed to do while... What you're supposed to do while you're keeping six feet away from other people. Luckily, there's stamps.com to make things easier. Thousands, I'm talking thousands of small business owners, have discovered the benefits of using stamps.com in the recent months. They've been able to keep their businesses going while avoiding crowds at the post office. Print postage at home and skip the lines with stamps.com. Plus, save money on discounts. You can't even get at the post office. And now, Stamps.com is working with UPS. Get discounts up to 62%. Like I told you in the beginning of the show, my wife does everything on Stamps.com. When I go home now, there'll be boxes out waiting for the fucking mailman. And we watch them like a hawk because we got ring. People are stealing your mail again around here. They're stealing. They're going into whole buildings with masks on and gloves and taking oh, all yeah? your mail at one shot to do insurance mm -hmm. scams. So watch your mail if you're in the L.A. area because they've got sticky fingers. Yeah. Speaking of stamps.com, they bring <laughs> the post office into the comfort of your home. Skip the line. Print postage 24-7. Any letter, any size package going anywhere in the world right from your couch. And the best part is the mailman will come and pick it up just like I told you. No contact required. It's that simple. Zip, zap. You also get great discounts. <laughs> get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 62% off shipping. Save up to 62% on UPS rates, plus never pay residential surge charges again. Uncle Joey's coming through for you. Guys, stamps.com is a no brainer, especially now. It saves you time, money, and it keeps you safe. You don't got to walk around, you don't got to die on FaceTime. So, right now, Right now, Stamps.com is going to give you a special offer for the church family. A four-week trial plus free postage and digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. It's easy. Go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and press in church. That's Stamps.com, press in church. Stay healthy, cocksuckers. That's it and that's that. The next church podcast will be Lee and myself, uh, Farewell in you motherfuckers. But for today, Felicia Michaels is our last guest. And I love you all. Oh, 
I fucking love you guys. Good luck, everybody. I love everybody. you guys. Yep. Good luck to you motherfuckers. And we'll see you Monday morning. Tip top Magoo. Kick this motherfucking mule, Lee. <laughs> <laughs>